Hello and welcome to this week's episode of B30. My name is Rob Turlin. And I'm Steven Gamarini. And we are joined alongside today by a sophomore from Westinghouse, PA, member of the Penn State uh, Beaver women's basketball team, Cassandra Flowers. Son, how are you doing today? Good. Good. All right, now you guys repeated as conference champions this year. So how, did, how does that feel? It feels good. Actually, um, in high school, uh, I had a three-peat. Good. So we won the championship back to back to back. And like this experience made it even better. Do you, uh, now that three-peat you had in high school, do you feel like this team is capable of that three-peat? Uh, now you guys were young this year. Yeah. Definitely. You know, you guys were very young, so you have basically your whole core coming back. Uh, how do you feel about next year? Well, over the um, season, like in the beginning, it was kind of rocky, you know, then we picked it up, we came together as a team, and I feel like next year we're going to come back even stronger, and we're definitely going to win championship again next year. 3 P. Yes. All right, good. And now, uh, you went to the national tournament, uh, but you guys lost in the first round. Uh, what are you going to, what are you going to take away from that, uh, from that loss and carry that for next year? Um, that we have to push harder, I guess. Like we were, like it was, going, we were battling back and forth, back and forth throughout the entire game. We had a lead up on them. Then, like they came back, and I feel like we should have just ran the ball more, basically. But I mean, we did okay. Like I was just happy we even even made it to nationals. So. Yeah. I mean, that's good, you know, repeat, um, hopefully going for a three-peat, you know, got to get that national title, though, so yeah. i got to bring it back and to then, Beaver. And uh, what are your plans for next year? Uh, are you going to stay here, or what are you doing? Next year, I'm returning. You're returning? So, so the team's going to be looking good then, huh? Yes, All right. right. And uh, Galmo? Oh, uh, we'd like to take a second and mention that our producer, Dante Massey, uh, spent some time up at uh, State College working for Thon, and we're going to show you some of his work up there. And after the uh, Thon uh, clip, um, we're going to be interviewing uh, Roger Roden, uh, senior for the Penn State Beaver men's basketball team. But first, Son, uh, thank you for joining us today. All right, have a good one and thank good you. luck next year, all right? Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, you're Uh, Rob and Steven here, and uh, we are now joined with senior Roger Roden from the Penn State Beaver men's basketball team. Uh, Raj, uh, you guys lost to my alto in the uh, conference tournament. Uh, how did you know? What do you? What did you take away from that uh, to the national tournament, which you guys came in uh, second place, the runner up? Um, just losing to my alto, uh, it made us look, take a deep look in the mirror in ourselves. Uh, we obviously felt we were head and shoulders the best team in the conference and uh, we didn't get to prove it in the conference championship. So, you know, we took all that emotion, you know, we took it to that next week of practice, and uh, we had the opportunity to compete very well in the national tournament. Right. I know, Raj, um, we jumped ahead a little bit to Mon Alto, but I'd like to take a step back, saying that you are a senior here. You know, your career is essentially done. I'd like to see, you know, what you think about your, your senior day here and how you reflect on, on your career and some of the emotions you might have felt on that last day on, on Penn State Beaver's court. Uh, there was a lot of emotion, uh, you know, uh, I was blessed enough to transfer here and, you know, uh, we had a very winning culture uh, when I came here and, you know, it was very emotional for me because, you know, my teammates were like more like brothers and, you know, we were more as a family and it was just, you know, I had a lot of great experiences here. Uh, we were blessed enough to go undefeated on our home court and it was just great just to seal it off with a win. 
And uh, what's the one thing uh, that you're probably that you're going to remember the most out of uh, your time here at Penn State Beaver? What's the one thing that you're going to take away? Because I know you you were the life of the team, Rod. You really were. You know, everybody fed off you. So, like, what's the one thing you're going to remember? All that running we had to do. Oh man, Coach <laughs> Will has you guys. They Coach Will has them running all summer, all winter, everything, man. Yeah, it was basically a track meet, but yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what you guys do. That's why you came in uh, second in the national tournament. And uh, tell us about that national tournament. You guys were the eighth seed, so that's the last team to get in, correct? Uh, there, it was out of ten, but uh, you know we were pretty well seed. Uh, you know we had to play four games in four days, and you know with all the running we do, we were a little bit gassed. But you know we went through so much adversity in the season. It was just like we had four seniors, and we were just gonna put it all on the table. Um, you know we came up short, but. Who really, uh, who really stepped up for you guys in that national tournament run? Who, uh, who really came up and like provided that spark when you guys needed it? Um, you know, looking at the tournament, I think uh, Rob Ayers uh, really solidified himself as one of the top players in the USCAA. Um, you know, we uh, we were waiting on him uh, for so long in the season, and you know, some of the games he just took over. Chris Weathers uh, tried to do a national championship game, but I think a lot of our players were gassed. Um, but it was really Rob that you know led us. Yeah, and um, if you so you're graduating this year, what's the one thing you want to say to uh, the younger guys uh, that are coming in next year and that are still on the team, like Big Rob? Um, I just don't take it for granted. Uh, there was a lot of practices this year. You know, like were we jugging around, not going as hard. Um, you know, like we were in the conference winning games by double digits and everything's good. But you know, whenever you get to like the conference tournament, the national tournament, when you're one and done, uh, all those practices and stuff mean something. So you know, just compete hard every day like it's your last. Right, and I know that's what Coach Will preaches. And uh, Raj, just wanted to say thank you very much, man. Good luck with you and your future. Thank you for having me. No doubt, man, no doubt. And uh, we are going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, and we'll be right back after that with Gavin High, and we will discuss uh, Penn State Beaver baseball. Fear the beard. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back, uh, Rob Turlin, uh, Stephen Galmarini, and we are now joined with a freshman on the baseball team, Gavin High. And Gavin, how you doing today? Not too bad, guys. How we doing? We're doing good. Now, uh, Gavin is a uh, freshman on the baseball team. Uh, Galmo and myself so are juniors on the baseball team, and uh, we're just going to ask uh, Gavin a couple questions about this year. Now, Gavin, you know, um, we graduated nine. We graduated nine guys last year. We brought in a lot of freshmen. Uh, you know, how do you feel like the team's looking this far? Um, start of the year, we're, uh, we're very young. We uh, obviously started off in a gymnasium, um, not getting a whole lot of reps outside on a, on a baseball field. But um, initial thoughts coming down to Florida uh, when we started off our first game against Bridgewater State, um, we had an amazing show. Um, a lot of our young guys, you know, uh, you know whoever, whoever was coming in to step into whatever role, uh, whether it be pitching or hitting or defense, our defense played uh, incredible. Uh, Tyler Schuster, game one, our senior, our captain, threw an incredible first game um, in a 2-1 loss. But uh, we're a very resilient team. We're going to be fighting till the end, which is which is something that you can build on respect and you can definitely love your teammates. Exactly. Now, uh, Gamble, I'll ask you a quick question. Uh, you've been here for three years. Uh, we had the same starting lineup for probably the three years that you've been here. And we graduated all of those seniors last year. We had about nine seniors that all graduated. Uh, Grant Scott and uh, Tyler Schuster are the only returning uh, really starters that we have on the team. And uh, what do you feel like is different between this year and last year? Um, I think our, our style of play is a bit different. Last year, the last couple years, we were a really like a power hitting team. You know, you get guys on base, ball to the gap, you drive them in. You know, we would put up 12, 15 runs a game. Uh, we even went so far as to beat a team so bad that they forfeited and quit and decided to go home. 
But uh, this year, this our team now really seems to focus on the pitching and defensive aspect and making a timely a timely stance in the game to, to score those runs when we really need to. So it just seems that our style of play is has switched a little bit it's from what teams are used to seeing from us. Yeah, and that's you're exactly right, Gelmo. I know when we were down in Florida, uh, it was totally different because nobody really knew like where we were going to play. And uh, we had a bunch of young guys step up, and uh, that's what you love to see. I know I love to see it, uh, being able to count on these young guys day in and day out and uh, having everybody understand their roles, and that's probably going to be our biggest our toughest task this year is uh, figure out how we play. I mean, we're a young team. Uh, the culture here, I feel, is different. You know, we're a lot more loose and relaxed than uh, I believe we were last year. Um, you know, like how do you how do you feel about that, Gav? Um, obviously, with a young team, you need to you need to rely on um, who who your leaders are, um, and you know, with with who step up and who who perform when it matters most. Um, I, I look back to. Uh, our second game it was a Thursday against Briarcliff, um, and it was a, they had just tied up the game 5-5, and we were looking for somebody to step up. And with two runners on, Grant Scott, our senior uh, first baseman, he stands in there and hits a moonshot to left center field that puts us up 8-5, and we eventually win by that final score. Um, that's that's just leadership, you know, guys willing to step up and put forth a, a serious effort in order to. Um, in order to finish out a game, kind of put us on top. That definitely gave us momentum rolling into the next game. Um, and it's that it's that don't quit factor um, that especially we as young players need to understand. You can't quit going into any game, no matter how bad the score is, whether we're winning by 20 or losing by 20. Exactly. And uh, Gamma, what do you got to say? Yeah, it's just basically Gavin really hit the nail on the head there. It's, you know, we got a lot of young guys who are impressionable and they need to see, you know, this is a different game than what we played in high school. Uh, guys got to step up and show what they're worth on the field. You know, the gym, gym's one thing, but between the chalk, that's another. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be, we are very young and people just need to understand their roles. And I feel like uh, down in the spring, like people establish themselves uh, with their roles. Uh, like Gavin here, uh, he's a freshman, came in. Uh, Caught, did an excellent job behind the plate, uh, excellent job in the field, even pitched a little bit, did a great job getting out of a jam. And uh, Steve uh, over here came in and probably had the best Florida pitcher for a pitcher that I've seen uh, since my three years of being here. Came in and um, locked everything down. Uh, it didn't matter. I know you came in, wasn't there one time, bases loaded. Uh, Gelmo comes in, bases loaded, one out, gets the next two guys to get out. We get out unscathed. So, that's just something that we're going to have to have is these young guys stepping up and knowing their role and being unselfish. And I know that's something that we've worked on in the fall is just having that team camaraderie. Um, and I love it. I really can't wait to see uh, how far we can take this team because we really don't know what we're capable of yet. Uh, but we're all ready and we're all ready to go. And that's the same. Uh, we're going to lead into softball a little bit now. And that's the same with the softball team. Uh, you know, the softball teams, uh, Young this year, they graduated Corey Fryermuth, uh, the pitcher for last year. So they're looking for some pitching this year, but uh, they are solid defensively, and they're like us, just trying to flip people around. They really don't know what their lineup's going to be yet, uh, but they have players that can play at every position. Yeah, I mean, I know uh, me and you traveled last year to the conference tournament, and we saw what the team had, and you know they really put it to some of the other teams out there. But there's, you know, a little bit of a turnaround in some key spots, such as pitcher with the loss of Corey Fryermuth, that, you know, the team has some questions that need to be answered, and we'll see how, how they do that this season. Exactly. Uh, talking with some of the softball players, um, I was able to get a sense of a um, little, little bit of a struggle when they went down to Kentucky. Uh, they obviously battled. They obviously played their hearts out. Um, they, wanted to, they wanted to succeed as much as... Any, any athlete would ever want to, and that's something that you want to see. You want to see that fight in, uh, in a truly young team. And much like the baseball team, a lot of moving parts on the, on the defensive end, a lot of players transitioning um, into certain positions that they would not normally play. Um, but that just shows you how versatile the softball team is going to be this year and uh, how exciting that they can potentially be once they, once they find the right parts and the right spots. Exactly, and they have uh, great leadership. I know uh, Rachel Burrell. Uh, Nicole Bauer Sox, Lauren Peer, uh, they've all been here for a while. Rachel Charlier, uh, they've all been here for a while and they know uh, how to get things done. Um, 
you know, they've been to championships. Uh, they won, I think they repeated last year. So they're looking to come back in a three-peat this year. Um, they just need to find that pitching, but other than that, uh, they should be pretty solid. A couple of All-Americans in Nicole Bowersox and Lauren Peer uh, coming back, so they should have a, uh, have a great season this year. Yeah, I expect them to really build off of what they did last year. Although they do have those question marks there, they s still are going to, I think, really put it to the rest of the conference and show them, everyone else what they got. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hof hopefully, you know, we as uh, baseball players and them as softball players, we're obviously pushing for them uh, to do the best that they absolutely can. Um, I know I know from the baseball team over to the softball team, you know, we give them as, you know, as much support, our full support as much as we possibly can. You know, we're one school, we're all pushing for Beaver, and we know that they're going to make some noise here in the conference, and they're going to they're gonna do real well once, once it comes to game time. So best of luck to them uh, for the rest of the season. And, you know, Gavin, you touched up on something uh, about uh, the support uh, around Penn State Beaver, and all the athletic teams support each other. Uh, I mean, we all hang out with, like, every sports team here, the basketball team, I know. The baseball team, we're always in the front row uh, for all the home basketball games, and uh, they're always helping us out in the gym or cheering us on as well. And same with the women's basketball teams and softball teams. You know, it's a great community here at Penn State Beaver. And, I mean, you being as a freshman, like, how do you, like, coming into that, how does, how is that environment for you? You know, you would think it would be something a little different. You know, there would be some egos, you know, certain people don't get along with other people. Um, but in reality, when it all comes down to it, we're all, we're all playing our sports, we're all rooting for the same school. Um, it's something that seems to be, be very rare once you get into, once you get into your sport. Um, obviously, you've got your friends and your family. Um, with whatever team you play for, but if you can find friends outside of the sport that you play, um, Beaver has grown as a community immensely, uh, which has been absolutely great, especially coming in as a freshman. Um, a lot of people to hang out with, a lot of great, um, high character, high moral people to be around. Yeah, yeah I think Gavin really hit it, hit it right there on the head. I mean, we are Penn State, so. And that's about that. that. Yeah, that is that. And we just want to say, Gavin, uh, thank you very much for thank joining us. Thank you. And uh, that will do it for this week's episode of Penn State Beavers B30. Uh, once again, Rob Turlin, joined alongside me, Gavin High. Stephen Gallarini. And Stephen Gallarini, uh, wishing everybody a good day, and we will see you next week. Thank you.